Are you ready to say hello to your robot coworker? Hello and welcome to Tech First. My name, of course, is John Gutsier. I recently did a session at Web Summit two weeks ago with David Regeer, the CEO of Neurorobotics, and we talked about robot coworkers, what it looks like, what it will look like, what's going to have to change about robots, and what might have to change about us. Enjoy. Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing? Hi, everyone. Before we get started, I wanted to ask the audience, show of hands, who here works the robot? Anybody? Do we have one? We have one. Awesome. Who here wants to work with a robot? We have more. We have robot lovers. Wonderful. Awesome. Cool. Let's get started. David, what will it be like to work with a robot? Very few of us have that experience so far. I think it will be good <laughs> because I'm building Robo. You are building this future, my friend, and yes. you think it will be good? No, it it will be good. Um, it depends also, like, I think what time uh, we are talking about. So it means uh, we will start for sure. And it's also how it's already started in the industrial field that we are having collaborative robots. So we really collaborate with humans, work with them together, make their lives easier. But I mean, in the farther step, I do believe they are change in the way that we are not really working with the robot. We're just telling the robot what to do and how to do, not how to do. That's wrong. That's the today, but how to do, uh, what to do. And um, that's, I think, also the change. So it means people have personal helpers everywhere by whatever we are doing. And they make just our lives easier. Take out your crystal ball. Uh, let's look, I don't know, three years, five years, eight years into the future. Will everybody be working with a robot partner? How many years? You, you choose. Uh, so um, I think if you want to, yeah. <laughs> because I, I do think that not everyone will is willing to, but I think who, who wants to, who wants to get some help, from robots because I do, um, it will be able to have a robot and have a helping hand everywhere. Yeah. What verticals will that start in? What jobs will that impact first? So right now it's more like there where we are missing people are. I mean, task where we don't find, let's say, labors. Uh, so it means also um, we have right now a lot of, let's say, skilled workers missing. And you can simply not use the robots of today to to... Uh, let's say, um, to tackle these issues today. Um, but exactly the cognitive robots is actually what we are doing. Uh, um, they're able to understand things. They're able to, let's say, perceive the environment, understand the environment, so they can also be able to learn things and understand. And that's the first thing. But And also, I think, in early care, where we simply also don't find any personal today. Mm -hmm. And But in the future, I hope it will go towards more not i don't hope i i know it will but uh it's more a time thing um we will have robots in our homes so they are doing simply let's say they're taking the role of our household because it's still not really set today so we are still discussing about who is responsible for what so you know Who's i have doing the dishes today yes <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's exactly the task of robots in my opinion no. excellent could you say if you stretch the definition a little bit, that most of us, most of us here are knowledge workers. Is that true? Anybody here work in a factory? Nobody? Okay. So we see robots in factories, obviously manufacturing, right? Logistics, all that stuff. We see the Amazon robots, KUKA stuff. We see the big welding robots, everything. Is there a sense if we're knowledge workers, we're all those kind of working with robots because we're checking chat GPT, we're using mid journey, you creative diffusion. There's AI built into our word processor that's suggesting words for us. Is that almost the thin edge of the wedge? That's, that's an, a good question because I do believe right now, because I mean, AI is the biggest hype today. Right? And if we're looking at chat GPT and all this like mid journey and everything, um, if you really question where AI is going today and what AI is actually able to do and where it's willing to do, it's more the task where I say personally, I would love to do that because I mean, it's creative work, right? So it means work like 
writing new stories or being able to draw, let's say, have some painting or whatever. I mean, I would love to do that. I simply don't have time for that. So that's why I believe that we should, and let's say, somehow embody AI to let them AI really do things which we don't like to do. Yeah. And that's about like taking my garbage out, filling up and emptying my dishwasher. I really hate that. And I think very soon we will get there, but uh, that's also our main purpose. You know what I don't like to do is publish my podcast. I love to have the podcast, love to have the conversation, love to bounce ideas back and forth, but the details of publishing it, they're just getting way easier. I used a script for it. It's got all kinds of AI tools built in. It'll build a blog post for it. I don't really can't use that, but it's helpful. I think we're probably already using robots a lot there. I want to go back to industrial robots, robots that do work, maybe even a household robot or a robot in healthcare. How can we make them safe? It was about a week ago. There was a worker in Korea, South Korea. Actually, the guy who was working on the robot, fixing, maintaining the robot, and it couldn't distinguish between him and a box of vegetables, and it killed him. Yeah. How can we make robots safer to work with? I heard about this uh, bad story, and I feel also very sorry for what happened, because I, I think, so for me, I saw also the picture. That, mm, it was an industrial robot. So it means a robot which is programmed, a robot which is not able to perceive environment. And that's exactly what I started the first cognitive robot company. And our focus is mainly on that. It's like, how do we work safe with humans? Because there is no robot, no single robot in the world which actually know what's a human. It cannot even distinguish human from other objects. That's also what happened there. and. And that's what we are able to do because we developed the first sensor in the world, which is actually exactly, uh, let's say, knowing what's a human. It's not, let's say, part of the AI. So it's not machine learning because I think the machine learning um, uh, rules or norms are much more stricter than any others. Mm -hmm. So we are actually identifying humans from other objects safely and then also knowing how to interact with them and not touching them, um, let's say, without the human willing it, uh, you know. Uh, so I think that was also one of our major steps we made from the beginning. And then being able to perceive the environment of knowing what's around you, what, what are, uh, like, who is talking to you? Because, I mean, the world is not, let's say, full of programmers. I think if I ask this question, I mean, here in this <laughs> event, probably the most are, <laughs> who of you is programmer? I think a lot. <laughs> the most event I'm coming, it's actually exactly the opposite. Like, I mean, there's 99% of the world is not programmer. Yeah. And that's why I believe also that robots should be able to understand environments and be able to interact with environment. With no code and low code, maybe that percentage is going to change a little bit, but we'll see about that. Yes. Can you sell that technology, by the way, about recognizing a human to Tesla, maybe to um, Cruise? which just dragged a person because it couldn't recognize it in the streets of San Francisco. And Tesla is well known to not be able to recognize small humans, right? I mean, they, they kind of need help there. Yes. So we are willing actually to cooperate with everyone because I think that's our key. Or we're, we're not just a pure robotics company. We're a technology company which are willing to invent things which are making our lives easier. And um, that's also what we get from this answer. We found like a lot of applications. I mean, security systems, like even um, like on this places where you need full privacy, like toilets or whatever, because I mean, a lot of hospitals, a lot of things happen actually in the toilet where they're going to bathroom. And um, there's many, many more like right now, big, let's say, I'm not allowed to say, <laughs> automation companies also in US, which which are willing to use that like to be just also more productive because they don't have to be super slow next to humans. They can just know there is a human or there's no human. And that's a big advantage. The other thing that comes to mind when I think about humans working with robots is I'd like to be able to talk. I'd like to be able to say, please move. I need to do something there. Or I'd like the robot to be able to say, I'm going this way or something like that. Theoretically, with something like ChatGPT, we ought to be able to get a good chunk of that, no? I think that's... That's also what we are doing already. So we are really willing to have a conversation with humans. And that's the way of how you program it. 
the simple way, like, because it's much faster, much simpler. Everyone is knowing how to talk to her. So you just need a lot of languages and exactly through this, let's say, ChatGPT or other tools, you can actually already do it today. So um, mainly we are selling right now into industrial market where we just simply say, okay, you have a, a task like taking parts of simply boxes, putting somewhere where today you need weeks to somehow make it happen. And then you're not able to change anything on the environment while our robots would just put it there and say, hey, just take the parts out, put it here. And the robot will understand it and also be right away start with it. So it means five minutes instead of weeks. And that's the advantage um, of simply interacting by voice, gesture, and uh, just like we do. Super interesting. I also wonder if you get the matrix model where you download some information. The robot doesn't know how to do X, but you need it to do X and maybe fix your furnace or something like that. You can download something from the furnace company. There you go. Now you know how to fix it. Done. We'll see about that. Crystal ball time again. Uh, let's say it's 10 years, whatever it needs to be. Robots are throughout the economy, throughout all the role, all conceivable roles. How does work change? I think mainly it changed a lot because um, we are going to do things which we like to do. So it means um, mainly the things will be automated, which we have to do. And that's what I hope. And that's also why, why we have to be careful of how we do use AI. And that's also what you said before, like you can use it as your helping tool mm -hmm. because that's also why we are, let's say the spare head of the species or the evolution. It's because we somehow found out that we can, let's say, uh, put the wagon behind and like a bull or a horse and somehow use it as a tool to support us and um, not like, or unfortunately also weapons um, which bring us there where we are. But if we are letting artificial intelligence just grow that way where we think these are actually things which we love to do, but we just simply do it with AI because it's possible. That's not a solution. I don't so, um, and that's what I hope that this change will happen, that we understand that AI should be embodied, AI should be there as a tool and um, helping us and not being our God and telling us what to do. So, and yeah, that's... Some have recently accused Sam Altman of OpenAI, the CEO of OpenAI that makes ChatGPT, of trying to create God, trying to create an, uh, an overarching intelligence in the cloud based on some comments he made. We won't go there right now, but as robots become ubiquitous, how do they change? If we're going to have robots that can go throughout all segments of our economy, what needs to change about them? Do they need to be smarter? Do they need to have more capability? Good Do they need question. To be more general purpose? Yes, they need to be more general purpose. I mean, in the best way is like making humanoid robots because I mean, the whole environment is made for us humans. So it's ergonomically, it's a made for humans. And um, that's one part, making humanoid. But to make them just humanoid, because the whole world is right now trying to do that. We see it in the US, we see it in China, we see it in now in Germany, we are the only one. <laughs> that's a good thing. Um, I believe like from a technical side, I see there is the reaction time, how we work with humans. So it means also like what kind of gearboxes to be able to have this, let's say dynamic movement next to humans. Because if I ask you to fill up a glass for me, you will not be as a robot. Like if, because the first time you're seeing a robot doing like filling up a glass for you will be proud and happy. And you will say, wow, it's amazing. You're, you're watching it 10 times. You will say, wow, super slow. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? And that's exactly what needs to be changed. And how to change, in our opinion, is we developed a new gearbox uh, for that to be able to have this dynamics. Same time, also the way of how do we use AI and watch levels by breaking it down. So it means, what do we do on the edge? It means has to have as reaction time as fast as possible. And what do we do, like, let's say on the top like, level, where we just say that's the general part where it tells what to do but how to do and reacting on the uh, situation, it's actually on the edge. And that's what we are doing also, different to others. So we've been talking about the details of what robots do, how they work, how they could engage in our work, how we in interact with them, all that stuff. Let's get a little higher level, maybe a little more metaphysical. Is this a future, robots throughout our economy, that we should run towards or run away from? There's sentiments on both directions. <laughs> 
You're asking the right guy. <laughs> Run away. We're running towards. <laughs> it's my business. No, no, it's, Why? Uh, it's for sure. <laughs> no, for sure. Uh, like in my opinion, run towards because it, it just simply makes our lives easier and makes it better. That's why we are doing robots. If not, I would not make robots because I think our major slogan is we serve humanity. So it means everything we do is more meant to support humans, not there to tell us what to do, but doing things. So it means like really being supportive in every part of our lives where we want to have it support, supported, you know? And I believe it's a good thing. I hope everyone believes so. I know. Who's yeah. running towards that future? Raise your hand. Who's running away from it? We got a few running away from it. I got to say, like, I need to in, talk. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, like in Europe, I have some faith that as robots get introduced into the economy, there will be fairness, there will be equity, the rewards that as a society that we reap from the work that robots do will be spread throughout. I don't have that same faith in the United States. I live in Canada. I live in, in, in Vancouver, but I, I work in the States quite a bit. I don't have that same faith there. How can we ensure that as we add robots and take jobs away or invent new jobs or change jobs, lots of different nuances of what will happen there? Everybody benefits, not just the people who make the robots and sell the robots and use the robots to make more money. I think simple answer for that, make them good enough. Because right now there is not many and not enough good enough robots, which are actually really supportive. I mean, today, I think nobody can really judge about robots because there is no good robots which are supportive enough in everyday's lives. So, and I believe that it's also the good thing because we have to prove it makes sense to use robots for just using it. It's the same for artificial intelligence. It's like not just using it and doing everything what AI is able to do. It's more about where are we willing to have AI doing things for us? And is it good enough for that, what we are doing? And so and that's the same also for robotics, in my opinion. Do you see a future where we'll need a universal basic income as robots become more uh, pervasive throughout the economy? Uh, it's a huge topic. I, 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 I'm not sure if, um, if it will go to this way. I do believe that we should start one day of taxing robots simply because we do somehow have the return, not just to a robot company and this one, which is using the robot, but really having return to everyone and somehow have this transition of uh, using robots everywhere, somehow finance and also, let's say, uh, support it. Um, but I do believe we will have enough things and tasks to do. It will be more, let's say, really uh, things which are just humans um, uh, work. Or like what I look forward to is a world in which the jobs that we don't do right now, because they're too expensive, we don't have enough people to do, environmental remediation, uh, time spent with elders, um, health care that you, where you need one-on-one -on -one attention over a long period of time will actually work out in a world with robots. I think that was Bill Gates' idea to tax robotic labor, and then that spreads the benefits around. Uh, I think we got to end here, but thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your attention, and thank you. Thank you so much, John.